World War I was a very dynamic war. The area of which it was fought spread throughout all of Europe and parts of Africa. The geographies of the different fronts affected how the war was fought and the tactics used. We will be showing how the different geographies of each front affect how World War I was fought and the outcome. The three different fronts we'll be going over are the Western Front, the Eastern Front, and the African Front. The Western Front ranges from the northeast side of France and ends in Belgium and southern Germany, a total span of 700 kilometers. The Eastern Front was located in Central and Eastern Europe, with borders of the Baltic Sea in the northwest, Germany to the west, and Austria-Hungary to the south. The Eastern Front ranges over more than 1,600 kilometers. At the African Front, the main spots that were fought in was North, West, Southwest, and East Africa. Following the outbreak of World War I in 1914, the German army opened the Western Front by first invading Luxembourg and Belgium, then gaining military control of important industrial regions in France. The attacks employed massive artillery bomb bombardments and massed infantry advances, a combination of entrenchments, machine gun nests, barbed wire, and artillery repeatedly inflicted severe casualties on the attacker and counterattacking defenders. As a result, no significant advances were made at first. In an effort to break the deadlock, the Western Front saw the introduction of new military technology, including poison gas, aircraft, tanks. These were very very new tactics were made possible by the very small and dense area that was the Western Front, unlike the much larger Eastern Front and different land types of Africa. All sides had signed treaties which prohibited the use of chemical weapons in warfare before World War I. But even after that, World War I saw large-scale chemical warfare, and these tactics were very effective in the Western Front especially. Because of the small and crowded area of the Western Front, most of the war there was seen in the trenches. Death in the trenches was a constant companion to those serving in the line, even when no raid or attack was launched or defended against. In busy sectors, the constant shell fire directed by the enemy brought random death, whether their victims were sitting in the trench or lying in a dugout. Many men died on their first day in the trenches as a consequence of a precisely aimed sniper's bullet. Leaving the trenches was not an option because directly between the trenches was no man's land, and entering this area was a suicide mission. The popular image of a trench assault is a wave of soldiers, bayonets fixed, going up and over the top and marching in a line across no man's land into hail of enemy fire. This was the standard method early in the war and successful examples are few. The more common tactic was to attack at night from an advanced post in no man's land. Having cut the barbed wire beforehand, in 1917 the Germans innovated with infiltration tactics where small groups of highly trained and well equipped troops would attack vulnerable points and bypass strong points, driving deep in the rear areas. The distance they could advance was still limited, though, by their ability to supply and communicate, and thus trench warfare was changing slowly. The Battle of Verdun was the largest battle of World War I and was fought from February 21st to December 18th of 1916. On the western front between German and French armies on hills north of verdun sur meuse in northeastern France. French artillery on the west bank had begun a constant bombardment of German positions on the east bank, which caused many German infantry casualties. The German strategy intended to provoke the French into counterattacks and counteroffensives to drive the Germans back. French attacks would be relatively easy to repel with mass artillery fire. From the large number of medium 
heavy, and super heavy guns brought into the area and supplied with large amounts of ammunition on excellent pre-war rail railways, which were within 24 kilometers or 15 miles of the front line. 140,000 German troops started the attack. They were supported by about 1,000 artillery guns that unloaded about 2.5 million shells at the Verdun region. 1,300 ammunition trains were needed to supply these guns. The Germans also had complete air supremacy with 168 planes located in the area, which would be the largest concentration of planes in history up to that point. To start with, the French only had 30,000 troops to oppose the Germans. On August 29, Officer Falkehan was replaced by Hindenburg and Ludendorff, who ended the German offensive at Verdun September 2nd. The Allies lost around 400,000 to 540,000 men, and the Germans lost around 355,000 to 430,000 of their men throughout this battle alone. Like the Western and African fronts, the geography of the Eastern Front definitely affected how the war on the front was fought. The 1,600 kilometers of land meant that a war, a more traditional kind of warfare, takes place. The movement of soldiers was fluid, and the ability to attack, flank, counterattack, and defend could happen without major immediate consequences. The location of the Eastern Front was in Central and Eastern Europe. Within the first six months of the war, a battle between Germany and Russia broke out in the front. Leading up to this battle, Russia's army was succeeding in invading eastern Germany. The Russian army was split into two and had planned to encircle the Germans. However, one of the armies rested and left the other one exposed. This battle would be later called the Battle of Tannenberg, which is named after where it was fought which is near present-day Olsten, Poland. This battle starts on August 26, 1914, when Paul von Hindenburg and Erich Ludendorff advanced with force against Russia's second army, led by General Alexander Samsonov. Samsonov was expecting another army to come help fend off the attacks by Hindenburg and Ludendorff. However, with communication difficulties, they did not meet up, and Samsonov was forced to take his army and retreat to the south. Samsonov's second army was deflating tremendously, and Russia's plan to take these territories ended before they even got started. The German armies intercepted the radio that told them exactly what the plans of the Russians were. The two armies from Germany surrounded Russia's army and defeated them with ease. This battle eventually led to Russia's downfall, and Samsonov committed suicide because he couldn't take being associated with this army. The casualties and wounded of the Russian army totaled over 92,000, while Germany only 13,000. The flanking technique and the communication throughout this large front tremendously impacted the outcome of the war. The ability to move armies north, east, south, and west helped both armies discover t different tactics and let the Russian army retreat and let the German army flank and surround the Russians. The geography of the Eastern Front didn't limit the armies like trench warfare did in the Western Front. The battles in the Eastern Front were more old school and new technology was not used as often as it was in the Western Front. Tango sat on a high plateau in German East Africa, which was located about 80 kilometers from the border of British East Africa. The British couldn't access Lake Tanganyika without going onto German grounds. The two countries had an agreement about the lake because it was so important to their economies. The British changed their minds though and ordered General Aiken to capture the German colony via a landing at Tanga in November 1914. This was to be the first major action of the war in German East Africa. The part of Africa they were fighting in was a jungle. Thus, the way they fought was completely different than how most battles were fought in the Western and Eastern fronts. The soldiers needed to be able to see where they were shooting, so they would try to sit up higher to see over the thick forest plantation. 
which was opposite of the western front, where they would use a lot of trenches to be lower into the ground. Another big factor was the insects in the forest. Many of them would irritate the soldiers so bad it would distract them from the war that they were actually fighting. One soldier actually talked about how the bees were so terrible. He said, we would have bees stinging us in the front and soldiers shooting us in the back. It was a completely different kind of scene for the people fighting at Tango. A little fun fact about the battle is that it is often considered somewhat courtly and gentlemanly because after the battle, the British met the Germans under a white flag and over a bottle of brandy compared notes and opinions of the battle. During this time, they would also take care of the wounded. In the three fronts, climate also affected the soldiers immensely. In the western front, in the winter of 1916 and 1917, the front was experiencing some of the coldest temperatures that they have experienced. Soldiers were experiencing frostbite, causing them to lose fingers and toes. Specifically, having frostbite feet had a specific term called trench foot. Also, during the nighttime hours, blankets and clothes would start to freeze, making soldiers uncomfortable. This was another aspect that soldiers had to worry about and prepare for. This takes away from the energy to prepare for the specific battles and strategies that were about to take place. The Eastern Front experienced similar weather difficulties, however it was different because of the vast difference in area of land. Climate was very different in the African Front. The soldiers on the African Front didn't have to deal with the epic cold as the temperatures often did not drop, drop below 60 degrees except in the mountains. The average temperature in Tanzania today in their winter time is about 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The different geographies of the Western Front, Eastern Front, and African Fronts definitely affected the way World War I was fought. The Western Front was very limited with area only having 700 kilometers in the northeast side of France, Belgium, and southern Germany. With this limited space to work with, the, the new tactic of trench warfare was born. The use of poison gas and machi machine guns also were new and started to become very popular within the trenches. With this fighting, many armies were afraid to make huge offensive attacks because they didn't want to enter no man's land. In these battles, specifically in the Battle of Verdun, there was no clear-cut winner. It was basically a stalemate with a lot of deaths. There was really no winners in trench warfare because of how deadly the new tactic was. The Eastern Front, however, had a huge area of land covering over 1,700 kilometers in Central and Eastern Europe. This had a huge impact on the way the war was fought in this area. The soldiers were very fluid and had plenty of room to maneuver. The Battle of Tam Tannenberg showed how armies can use offensive attacks, defense to stop attacks, counter attacks, and the ability to flank. In contrast to the Battle of Verdun and the Western Front, there was a clear-cut winner in the Battle of Tannenberg. The German army used offense and flanking in order to essentially take the Russian army out of the picture in World War I. The Eastern Front was very different from the Western and African Fronts, but the movement stood out by far. The Battle of Tanga, also sometimes called the Battle of the Bees, was one of the first and bigger battles at the African Front in World War I. This battle had significance because of the location. The Battle of Tanga was fought in a jungle region, which caused them to have to sit up higher. This shows the significant difference it had from the Eastern Front and Western Front. Many other places in World War I, the soldiers wouldn't try to sit up higher. They would either go into trenches or just stay on the ground. Because of the thick forest plantation though, the soldiers at the African Front had to adapt to this difference. Along with the forest difference, the African Front soldiers also had to deal with annoying outside influences like the bees. 
That's one reason this battle is also known as the Battle of the Bees, because of how much these forest bees impacted the soldiers and the battle stock. So how do the different geographies of each front affect how World War I was fought and the outcome? The main difference between the Western Front and all the other fronts fought in World War I is the size. The Eastern Front was much larger than the Western Front, which means the fighting style was much more old school and tradition. In the trenches at the Western Front, any new advances in weapons were being used due to the new way of fighting which they were learning. The African Front was much different from both the Western and Eastern Front due to the multiple land types, terrain, and climates that were endured. 